Bishop tells me Otto Berg is here. I will kill him for you. Hello, and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew, and I am the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 23, and today we're going to talk about the woman who gave us that quote, Galina Voronina. Before we get into Galina's biography, we have to talk about where we can find her. First, she was introduced in the website Assassin's Creed Initiates, and then she would find herself in Assassin's Creed Syndicate and the comics Assassin's Creed and Assassin's Creed Uprising. Though, we would also see her mention in emails during Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Galina is a Russian feminine given name that is also popular in Bulgaria and Slovenia, mostly during the period of Soviet influence. The origin of the name appears to come from ancient Greek myth. In one of their myths, there is a Nereid mermaid that was known as the goddess of calm seas, and her name was Galini. There are also two Christian female martyrs that are recognized by the Orthodox Church with this name. The first died in 252, while the more famous Galini of Corinth died in 290. Voronina might be based on the Russian word, and and I do apologize, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but it's uh, Voron, which means raven. And another possibility is that it's based on the Russian word Vorona, which means crow. So it's kind of funny to me that the root of her name could possibly mean calm raven or calm crow. Born on July 20th, 1983, alongside her twin sister Avdota to Medaya Voronina, Galina would grow up in Protvino, within the Moscow Oblast, which roughly translates to province or region in English, and of course the Soviet Union. Raised as an assassin since birth, as her mother was an assassin scientist who worked within a facility that belonged to the Russian Academy of Sciences. By 1991, this would be the only assassin science facility left. At this point, Galina was eight and would watch as the Russian Brotherhood declined further and would watch as her mother would desperately try to reverse this with the animus that she had built. Medaya's experiments, though, would prove to be a disaster, with the people who used the animus driven insane and then sealed off in other sections of the compound. Eventually, though, Medaya decided to be the machine's only test subject, which would cause her sanity to slowly fray because of the bleeding effect. In December of 2012, a sudden power surge would cause Medaya to have a vision of Eve, which she took as a sign to redouble her efforts. But Medaya would force the remaining members of the Russian cell into the animus, Galina would be told of an old assassin meeting place within the Moscow Zoo. On the instruction of Adota, based on information she found within their grandmother's journal, Galina would visit the spot on every full moon in hopes that she would contact other assassins. On June 28, 2013, the Russian government announced that it had a plan to put all of the Russian Academy of Sciences' remaining property and place its facilities under government control. This act would put the remaining Russian assassins in danger. Because of this danger, Medaya would force both of her daughters into the animus. Unlike the others, though, Galina would be able to keep her mental stabilities and would use the bleeding effect to learn the techniques of her ancestors. Galina would find a way to continue visiting the spot in the Moscow Zoo and would eventually make contact with Gavin Banks, Emmett Leary, and Emmanuel Barza on March 15, 2014. After telling them of the Russian Brotherhood's situation, she would ask permission to assassinate her mother. Two days later, they would reconvene to discuss plans, and Galina would convince Gavin to help her. Once the group arrived to the facility in Protovino, they would find that it was crawling with deranged assassins and had to break into the facility. Even though she had requested backup from Gavin and his team, Galina barely needed it, as she used her two hidden blades to end the lives of her attackers which included her twin sister, Avdiota. Eventually, they would find Galina's mother babbling and strapped into her animus. As Galina knelt down next to Medaya, Emmett would watch the screens, and he would see Juno in them. And when Galina ended her mother's life, Juno would cry out and then vanish. Gavin was able to convince Galina to join him on the assassin ship, the Altair II, and they would travel to St. Petersburg, where she would meet the rest of the ship's crew on March 26, 2014. On April 24th, 
the crew would be tasked with deciphering riddles within William Miles' codex in an attempt to find him. They would eventually do this, and the Altair II would dock in a hidden cove in Norway on May 1, 2014. On May 23rd, after Rebecca Crane had updated the systems of the Altair II and found a spy uploading reports to a group that were called the Initiates, William would gather the crew of the ship to identify the spy based on their investigation. William would name Stephanie Chu as the culprit, and on William's command, Galena would move in to kill her. Eric Cooper would intervene and reveal that he was actually the spy, though they would eventually confess that they were working together. William would then confess that he had no intention of having them killed, as the initiates appeared fairly reasonable, and instead had Sean Hastings send a video to the initiate group offering them to join the assassins. In October of 2014, Gavin would lead a group that Galena was in to attack and destroy the Abstergo facility in Paris that was dedicated to the research and study of the sage John Standish. Galena would confront Alvaro Gramatica during the attack alongside Sean Hastings. Galena would try to kill Alvaro with a grenade, but he would survive because of the Shroud of Eden he was wearing. After the attack, the group would be followed by Templars Juhani Otzoberg and a man by the name of Sorkin. Galena would be able to kill Sorkin before escaping in boats that were waiting for them. In late October 2015, Bishop would reach out to Galena and have her meet up with Sean and Rebecca in London to help them locate a Shroud of Eden. When she arrived, she would sneak up on Sean, causing him to jump, and while they reminisced about the mission to Paris, with Galena teasing him for screaming like a baby, she would eagerly tell them that she would kill Burke for them. After the Shroud's location was found, the three would travel to Buckingham Palace to recover the Shroud from a secret vault. When they arrived, they would find that Berg, Violet de Costa, and Isabel Ardent had arrived before them. A fight would ensue that would see Berg breaking Galena's hidden blades, but she would eventually get the upper hand and knock him out. But just as she was about to smash his head in with a rock, Sigma Team would arrive and force her to take out the reinforcements and then retreat because of a gunshot wound that Rebecca received during the fight. By the end of the year, Galena would be reassigned to a cell in California, which was led by Xavier Chen. The two would find conflict within each other over the report of Joseph Lawner, an assassin who was thought to be dead. His report claimed that he had appeared to join the Templars, claiming that he was trying to lure out one of their top agents by helping them find a piece of Eden that was located in Salem during the time of the witch trials. Xavier was inclined to believe him because of their shared history together, but Galena thought they'd be better off to kill him because of what happened with Daniel Cross. So to verify the validity of his claims, they would search for an individual with genetic memories of that time and location. Their technician, Cody Adams, would hack Abstergo's Helix database and find that an employee of the San Diego branch of the Malta Banking Corporation had these memories. Galena and Xavier would head to San Diego to recruit the owner of these memories, Charlotte de la Cruz. Charlotte would be enthusiastic about joining, but a group of men that were sent by the Templars arrived at Charlotte's apartment and attacked them. Xavier and Galena would be able to eliminate them and took Charlotte to their hideout, located near the Salton Sea. It would be here that Charlotte would enter the Animus to relive the memories of her ancestor, Tom Stoddard an assassin who was active during the Salem witch trials. Because of Tom's nature clashing with Charlotte's moral compass, she would struggle staying synced with him. This would lead to Galena having little faith in Charlotte, which Xavier would object to, causing the two to frequently argue. Galena would eventually decide that looking for answers in the past had become irrelevant and ordered Cody to pull out Charlotte so they could kill Joseph before he could give out any of the Brotherhood's secrets. When Cody hesitated, Galena would forcefully disconnect Charlotte herself. This would cause Xavier to get involved and lead to Galena punching him and calling him a failure of a leader. This situation would escalate after Charlotte mentioned the Isu Kansas, which caused Galena to hesitate, which gave Xavier time to pull a gun on Galena, threatening to shoot her if she prevented Charlotte from entering the Animus. Before anything could happen, though, Cody suggested that they allowed Charlotte to use the Animus while they drove back to San Diego. Agreeing to this, they would prepare to leave, and as they had finished, Galena would set the safe house on fire so any traces of their presence would be destroyed. 
During the trip, Charlotte would find that Joseph's ancestor was Jennifer Quarry, who died before witnessing the hiding place of the Peace of Eden, which she took as meaning that Joseph was telling the truth. After parking near the Templar safe house, Cody was hacking into the building's security system, but found a file on Joseph that revealed that Xavier had overseen the mission, which led to his disappearance. Galena then scolded Xavier for risking their lives in an attempt to make up for his past mistakes. Despite the animosity between the two, Galena and Xavier would head out after this argument in an attempt to save Joseph. The two would find him in a gym, where he would confirm her suspicion and attack them. During the fight, Joseph would break Galena's leg, forcing her to watch as Joseph proceeded to fight and eventually drowned Xavier. Charlotte would come to the rescue just as Joseph was about to kill Galena, but Joseph would try to convince Charlotte to his side, stating he wasn't a Templar, as he detonated a bomb elsewhere in the building. Charlotte would refuse, and when the Templars came in to kill Joseph, she would carry Galena out through an air vent to find that she had accidentally killed an asthmatic Abstergo employee that she had bound and gagged to cover her entrance to the building. Once in the van, Galena would have Cody inform Gavin about the mission and request that a team be sent to Salem, though Charlotte would say that it was unnecessary. As they left the scene, Galena would thank Charlotte for saving her life, but she was in low spirits after the death of Xavier and the thoughtfulness that caused the death of the Abstergo employee. After the death of Xavier, Galena would take control of the cell which would then flee to Mexico. While there, Galena would be adamant about tracking down Joseph, who was able to flee the Templar safe house. Once they were in Mexico City, they would rent a motel room and hire two discreet doctors to set Galena's broken leg without asking questions. As the female doctor was tending to Galena, the male pulled a gun and would cause Galena to pull her own and shoot him to death. Galena would then order Charlotte to take his gun and point it at the woman. She would then state that she knew nothing about his motives and that he was new. After Charlotte said that she was telling the truth, Galena would knock her out. Taking refuge in the motel across the street, the cell would watch to see if anyone went to their former room. During this time, Charlotte would realize that Consus wanted her to find the group known as Eredito and would start searching the darknet for them. Galena, though, was skeptical, but after taking some morphine for her leg, Charlotte would convince Cody to put her back in the Animus to relieve the memories of Quilla, her Inca ancestor, who she believed was the key to finding Eredito. The next morning, Cody would be forced to pull Charlotte out of the Animus to let it recharge. Galena would take this time to tell them that she had found the Templar Garcia Lopez, who would lead them to Joseph. Charlotte, though, refused because she knew it would be a kidnap and torture scenario and believing that Eredito was more important. After Charlotte called Galena jealous that Consus picked her, Galena would state that using the Animus left them open to an attack, and that if she refused to participate, that she would destroy the Animus. During the mission, Charlotte and Cody would fail to capture Garcia Lopez, which Galena would accuse Charlotte of doing on purpose. Charlotte would claim it was an honest mistake, and then insisted on getting back into the Animus. Galena would tell her that it wasn't a game, and that she couldn't just respond, and that Garcia Lopez would tell the other Templars about them, putting the cell in more danger. Later on, Charlotte would ignore an order to watch the van, and use the time to get in the Animus. Galena would pull her out, and being furious over Charlotte ignoring orders, Cody would discover that the batteries were toast. Charlotte would choose to find new batteries, to which Galena would tell her not to go, but if she did she'd do it alone. Galena would eventually catch up to Charlotte and reveal to her that the Mexican cartel had captured Cody and left his ear as proof. That night, Charlotte and Galena would attempt to rescue Cody at the Estrado Aztec Stadium, where they were supposed to surrender to save Cody's life. Galena, still healing from a broken leg, would take up a sniper position in the bleachers while Charlotte would begin to methodically eliminate the cartel's henchmen. As Charlotte made her way to Cody, Galena would blame her for the situation because of her mercy as the female doctor alerted the cartel and for losing Garcia Lopez, which prevented them from leaving the city. Charlotte would end up being ambushed by the cartel's leader, Arturo Vera, who wanted revenge for his lover, the doctor that the assassins had killed in the hotel room. 
he would end up shooting Charlotte in the foot to force Galena from her sniper's nest. Shortly after, though, the Templars would arrive via a helicopter and gun down Vieira and almost get Galena herself. Charlotte would think that the Templars were after her and would threaten to commit suicide if they didn't spare her teammates. But the Templar leader, Ortega Sanchez, would tell her she was wrong and that bringing in the head of the infamous Galena Voronina would be enough. Thinking on her feet, Charlotte would then offer the location of Erudito's meeting three days after the battle if they would allow her team to live. Sanchez would give her a day to find the information and to surrender herself before hitting her gunshot wound with his cane, unbeknownst to her, injecting her with a microscopic tracer. And he would tell her that it was insurance from a double cross and would harm her friends and family if she did not uphold her end. While Charlotte worked to gather the information, Galena would reach out to the cartel, offering them the head of the man that killed their leader in exchange for safety of her team during the meeting with Sanchez. When the cartel attacked the Templars, Galena would use the distraction to get her cell out of the city. After a few weeks in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Galena would be able to make a pact with Erudito leadership. In exchange for Charlotte's help to learn more about Consus, Erudito would help them find Joseph. After finding out that Joseph was in Somalia, going by the name Alan Wilde, Charlotte would ask Galena to bring him in alive because she had a hunch on him. While in Mogadishu, Somalia, Galena would lead a group of Eredita field agents that she had been training in their attempt to find Joseph. While observing a public event that was attended by a known Templar financier, Zara Okur, Galena would be attacked by Joseph and in her attempt to fight back, would be knocked down. Michelle Lamar would be able to distract Joseph long enough for Sheed to pull a gun on him. At this moment, they would also receive a distress call about Erudito being under attack. Realizing that they needed Joseph because he had a plane, they would convince him to go along by allowing him to speak with Charlotte. During their flight to the island, Galena would also send a message to the assassins asking for help. When they arrived to the island, the Templars shot down the plane that the assassins were in, and when they surrounded the downed plane, all they would find is the dead body of Sheed in the co-pilot seat. The remaining three would ambush the Templars, and after this ambush, they would plan an assault on the ship that shot down the plane. Eventually, they would take down the ship, but Joseph would be badly wounded and told the others to leave him behind and to find the survivors of the island. Galena, Michelle, and the remaining Erudito survivors would be rescued by Tayoshi Takakora and Arnon Shute by killing not only Sanchez, but the Templars that Charlotte surrounded. Throughout 2017, Galena would continue training Michelle, but now she was her apprentice. During her time training Michelle in combat and free running in London, they would get a call from Charlotte with her report on the mission to find information on the Phoenix Project in Hong Kong. Charlotte would instead request extraction for her and her tech, Gernierica Maneo, and informed Galena that the rest of her cell was dead. Charlotte would go on to explain how the mission went wrong and about a boy who spoke and acted as if they had already met before. A month after this report, Galena and R.N. Schutt would be in Berlin to intercept Heidenreich Hart, a scientist and Kyoshi's mole within Abstergo. The two would seek out Hart because it was his information that had led to the mission that Charlotte took in Hong Kong. Hart said that no one within Abstergo knew what had happened, but there were rumors that the Black Cross was investigating the matter. What they did not know was that Hart was secretly a member of the Instruments of the First Will and dedicated to Juno. Galena would remain in Berlin while the rest of her cell went back to London. Secretly, though, Galena would return to London to find most of the cell missing and Monroe preparing to slit an unconscious Charlotte's throat. Galena would stop the attack and throw Monroe to the ground and begin to torture him. This would be the scene that Kyoshi and Arend would return to, with Galena telling them that the mission they were just sent on was meant to be an ambush so Monroe could kill Charlotte. Arend would storm off angry over Galena's use of torture, and Kyoshi would stay and discuss Charlotte's state and Michelle's disappearance. While Galena would suspect Isu influence, Charlotte would awake and confirm that it was Juno behind the attack and that the assassins needed to warn the Templars. Sometime later, Michelle would return to the hideout, but she brought with her Juhani Berg. 
As soon as Galena saw him, she jumped to attack him. But Charlotte would stop her, telling her that it wasn't time to do anything rash. At a restaurant near the hideout, Berg would explain his mission in Geneva, meeting Michelle, and how he was attacked by the instruments of the first will. When Kayoshi suggested that Monroe might be a member, Michelle refused to believe it, and Berg would still suggest that they should work together, as he couldn't trust anyone within the Templar organization. Charlotte would agree to the idea, and when they returned to the safe house, Galena would roughly interrogate Monroe. When Charlotte desynchronized from the Animus, Berg would continue the interrogation. When Charlotte was advised not to use the Animus again, Berg would convert their Animus with some Helix hardware to allow him to relive the memories of Albert Bolden to find a piece of Eden called the Kui Noir. Eventually, he would find the location of the piece of Eden, and reluctantly, the group would head to Barcelona together. Here, they would find the Kui Noir 60 miles south of the city. In August 2018, three days before what would be known as Resurrection Day, Berg, Charlotte, and Galena were digging up the Kui Noir when they would be attacked by the instruments of the First Will. The instruments would be able to gather the piece of Eden and leave them to plan what to do. They would decide to get back on the plane and head to Alervo Grammatica's laboratory in Australia. On what would become known as Resurrection Day, the group would attack the laboratory, with Galena working as a sniper. She would kill Jazdip Dami, an assassin turncoat, making her way inside the lab, guided by a force field of blue light. Galena would be able to watch Charlotte assassinate a reborn Juno, but the building would start to crumble, and she would have to retreat. Berg would set off an explosion, completely leveling the building, leaving little trace of the cloned Isu body, and killing Charlotte in the process. In her grief, Galena would resort to self-medication and drinking herself into stupor, and not leaving her room aboard the Altair II. I've always enjoyed Galena from the first moment I saw her in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. She is a take-no-nonsense character that is a superb hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist. What I didn't know before reading the comics was how she got her skills. Going back and seeing her tragic backstory and how she got her skills in the Animus like Desmond did, it allowed me to connect with her more as well. More than once, we see her as a badass fighter, and she came off in Syndicate as a little unstable, though that wasn't really touched on within the comics that we see her in. Her interactions with Sean and Rebecca are amusing, but when she's with Charlotte, she is rather standoffish, though she is always looking out for what she thinks is best for the Brotherhood. The only thing I would have liked to have seen the games and comics do with the character is a touch more on her issues with mental instability from the bleeding effect. I also like seeing her interactions with Juhani Otto Berg as they have this clear respect for each other. While they don't like each other, it does show that you can be respectful of people that you clearly don't like. And it's something that I can connect with. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give me a review on iTunes. If you have any questions about the Assassin's Creed or topics that you would like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Instagram at visions underscore AC. You can find those links in the show's show notes. Until next time, my Assassin friends, make sure to follow the Creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.